Welcome along to this edition of Film Talk, and I'm delighted to say that our guest today is Mark Priest, a long-time friend of mine and a huge film buff, film historian, knows everything there is to know about the greatest films ever made, and he's our guest today to talk about one of the best films ever made, and one of my favourites too, one of his favourites. Mark, what is the film we're talking about today? Well, thank you, Richard, for that introduction. The film is The Wild Geese. Wow. It's an absolutely fabulous movie. Yeah. Um, it's one that I've loved and continue to love to this day. Wow. Made in 1978 when it was released yep. with an all-star cast, including the likes of Richard Burton, yeah. who's always fantastic. Amazing. But he's even better in this. This is, this is where he's really at his best. <laughs> fantastic. Roger Moore... Yeah, I love Roger Moore, but in this particular movie, he really hits it. For exceptional, me. he is exceptional. He is, he is, he is wonderful, exceptional. wonderful. Yeah. And of course, Richard Harris, oh. it's uh, an, an excellent part for him as well. Yeah, he was really desperate to be in this film as well, really keen, and wanted to, to wanted it very, very much indeed. In fact, the producers uh, weren't that sure they wanted him in it. No, really, he had a bit of a reputation you may have heard about. He liked a small glass a schooner or something. <laughs> yes, occasionally. that's right. Yes. That's right. But uh, he really wanted yeah. it, and he really got his act together. In fact, he wasn't allowed to drink throughout the whole course of the movie, and uh, he had to be signed in and signed out at the end of the day on every shoot. Wow! So, uh, but he was prepared to do it because he knew this was going to be an absolutely fantastic film. And that was Richard Burton or Richard Harris. That was Richard Harris. Richard Harris. He could probably have said the same, the about, same about Richard Burton too. <laughs> but I think he was probably, you know, once he was on set, it's a bit like the actual scene where he meets. Uh, he plays Colonel Faulkner. Yeah. And he's in a scene right at the beginning with Matheson, played by Stuart Granger. As a, Plays the part fantastic. Yeah, a great part. And uh, who uh, offers him a glass of whiskey, which he guzzles down with both hands. It's, it's hilarious, but it actually makes the point yeah. that he actually says to Matheson, "Well, don't worry, I'm I'm dry when I'm working." And <laughs> <laughs> say that again. Yeah, Matheson <laughs> says, "Yeah, I've heard that." And then uh, Richard Burton says, um, "Well, I can tell you've no sense of humour." But actually, that was the point. I think when he was actually on set. Burton was absolutely crystal. He yeah. knew what he wanted and he was going to give a really good performance. And he certainly did. Certainly did. And the other main star of the film was... Harvey. Harvey Kruger. Harvey Kruger. Um, plays a South African uh, character. Uh, very good in the part. Um, although in, in retrospect, he actually complained bitterly after the film came out because a lot of his part was cut out. Oh dear. Um, which he wasn't very happy about. But um, nevertheless, he's actually a crucial part of the film. So the number of the story is what? Okay, so you've got some ageing mercenaries here okay. that have got a, a, a great reputation in the business of mercenary. A bit younger than us. Or older than us, but a bit <laughs> actually, older than us. Actually, I think they are a bit older than us, actually. Yeah, fair enough. And uh, Matheson, Stuart Granger... Yeah. Is, uh, is really keen to uh, have a coup in South Africa as he owns some uh, copper mines. And uh, so he's recruited Colonel Faulkner, Burton, uh, who then is brought into London um, under the cover of darkness as well, I have to say. He's obviously not really wanted in the UK. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's uh, commissioned to go ahead and choose his team. And uh, the, the people he wants is Ray Fajandas, which is played by Richard Harris, he wants Sean Finn, um, and he seeks out to, to, to get those guys on board. Sean Finn, Roger Moore, mm. is uh, he's in a bit of a predicament because he's just... Uh, if you see right at the beginning of the film, there's, a, there's a, some great scenes where he's realised he, he thought he was doing some money running for these sort of mafia-type characters. But actually, it turns out to be drugs, Oh God. And he's really unhappy about that. I bet, yeah. So much so that he turns up, pulls a gun on the, the this, this young fella. Actually, he's Alan Ladd's son, believe it or not, in fact. Is that right? That's correct, yeah. Um, oh. and, uh, and obviously uh, the, the heavy man was there as well. And he actually um, he's so disgusted that he's pushing drugs. He actually forces this lad, this mafia chap, to eat the cocaine. Mm. and uh, it's a really powerful part it really sort of sets the scene the nub of that though of course is that he is, there's obviously a repercussion of that and he has to go undercover 
in well, London. A, there's a contract out on it. Absolutely. So, yeah. Right across London. And, um, you know, obviously Burton wants him in the part. As, you know, that's, he's a key player. And if he can't get it, Sean Finn, then the whole thing's off. So he insists to Matheson's, you know, um, partner that actually if there's somebody more important than Matheson, he can persuade the Mafia to, to, to turn alone. over the contract. And it's a great scene where Richard Harris and Burton go into this nightclub, casino, um, and uh, they're quite over the top, actually. Valerie? And one of the crew, yes. yeah. That's um, right. Heather Honey. Yes, that's right. So Richard Harris's girlfriend is yes. played by our very good friend, Valerie Absolutely, Lee. yes, absolutely. Yeah. And interesting, if you look carefully, Susie Hunt is actually in that scene as well. Wow. Who later became Burton's wife? She was well, at that point. Well. She was married to James Hunt. So, uh, of course, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah you it's, see, it's interesting. Well, you, you get all of that you can in the speculate. making of documentary. Do you? No, no, you can Great speculate. Um, and anyway, so they uh, they basically um, they find that Roger's hiding up above the casino. Um, they get upstairs, and obviously, Roger Sean is uh, delighted they've turned up. In fact, he says, thank God, yeah, because he knows he's in trouble. Big trouble. And uh, just at the point where the bad guys turn up, there's a few fights and everything else, and then the contract's lifted. And it's a fantastic... Uh, it really sets the scene for the rest of the movie, which is an explosive, great fun, entertainment... But, but the thing wonderful. is, straight after that, yeah. the action then shifts... Yes. To Africa as yes. they're parachuted in. That's right. They rescue the person they're meant to rescue. Yep. And they're waiting now for the plane to pick them up, get back, and the job's done. And but that's when the double cross happens. Isn't absolutely. It? And the whole thing shifts around. Absolutely, because uh, they're all literally and, and, and Roger Moore says, you know, thirty thousand pounds in my pocket. He can't believe it's gone yeah. so well. They've not even lost one man at this point. They haven't been on the ground a few hours. Exactly. Ready in and out. Home. It's a perfect, done. perfect coup. However, they are double-crossed. Betrayal. Right at that last minute. In fact, the, the Hercules plane lands, turns round, the guys are all cheering, so they know they're going to get on the plane, and they're going to make a few quid. <sighs> but literally, I mean, right, last minute, there, there's, a, there's a call comes through, Matheson has pulled it, and the plane takes off. It's, uh, it's, it's a classic. And they're asking, obviously asking of Burton, why on earth has this happened? And he's then revealed who the paymaster is, which is this guy, Matheson. Mm. And uh, why has he done it? Why has he done it? Well, obviously he's done a deal with some of the, you know, the country down there yeah, in yeah. South Africa. They've done a deal with some politician or whatever. But more importantly, he's just saved half a million pounds in not paying these mercenaries. So it's a win-win for him. So they then have to fight their way across... This African nation, fictional that's African right. nation, yes. to try and make their escape and get back if they can. Yes, that's right. And as many of them as they can yes. and stay alive. And it's incredibly time. exciting. And don't forget, this is 1978 when this came out. You know, there was no CGI, there was no special effects in the, in the way we know it nowadays. So what action you see is there right in front of you. They, they worked hard at making it a very tense, uh, excellent film. And um, I didn't mention, but it was directed by Andrew V. McLeggan, who was more well known, in fact, for Westerns, Is cowboy that right? films. That's right. Okay. Um, and so you can actually see that in the movie. Once you realise, you can see that it's, uh, it's that sort of uh, appeal to it has got that sort of background. So good fun. Do you remember where you saw it for the first time? Yes, I saw it in the Odeon Cinema in Worthing. Oh, yes. yes, I remember that cinema. That's right, yeah. It's a hairdresser. And that was just, when it, that originally was just a one screen cinema, big cinema. Um, they changed it into a small multiplex and eventually it's knocked down now. Of course, it's into a, into a shopping parade, which is a shame. Now, I saw it at the Odeon in St. Albans. Oh, right. Yeah. Which closed down a few years later. Yes. And has now reopened. Oh, really? As, uh, as they've re renovated it and done it up, and it's a new cinema. So well, it's, it's the one in Worthing was an Art Deco cinema. Yeah. It's a great shame, really. Not anymore? No, no, absolutely. And what is it about the film? that I mean, why does it qualify for our top 100 list of the greatest movies ever made? In our opinion, right? Yeah. So it's a subjective no. thing. No. But why do, why do you think it... Why does The Wild Geese qualify? I think first and foremost is the fact that it's one of those films... That I can say I, I don't mind seeing it again and again and again. Yeah. 
over and over. Every time I watch it, I enjoy it. In fact, I probably enjoy it more each time. It matures, isn't it? Absolutely. And you see different things every time you, you rewatch it. Absolutely, yes. It's, gr it's great fun. It's really entertaining. Yes, you might be able to... You can probably fathom out what's going to happen, but you don't mind being taken along this ride because it's all about entertainment. Great acting from... You know, all the actors actually are fantastic right the way through the whole outfit. Perfect. And uh, it's, for me, it just is a, it's an iconic film. It is up there mm. with Where Eagles There, with The Guns of Navarone. It's just Amazing. pure entertainment. It's almost like Alistair MacLean's school of, Absolutely. of filmmaking, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. No, I thoroughly enjoyed it and um, delighted that it, it was as popular as it, as it was. I think there was two sequels after that yeah, yeah I was going yeah. to touch on that so the, it was Wild Geese 2 wasn't there that's and, right some and other, code name Wild Geese with Lewis which, Collins and oh from the professionals Van, yeah. oh, I can't remember his name now but yes Van, Van Oye, yes yeah. not quite on the same no they were dreadful weren't they <laughs> they were the worst films I think some of the worst films I've ever seen Pro probably sequels. yes it, and not a patch didn't deserve to have no. The words wild and geese in the title. Exactly. Yeah, they were just purely just trying to spin off, weren't they? Yeah. Weren't they? But, um, but in actual fact, in the, in the first sequel, Burton was about was actually planned to be in it. He was going to be in it, yeah. Yeah, he was going to play. He was going to play Faulkner again. But Edward Fox played him. Yeah, but unfortunately, he, he died just a couple of weeks before production started. Indeed. Mm. Indeed. Very sad. Yes. Great yes, actor. Absolutely. Oh, wonderful. I, every time I hear his voice on anything, it's, uh, it sends a chill down you. He was a terrific actor. One of my, one of my heroes. The, the original book of the story that's behind The Wild Geese by Daniel Carney, which is a great, great mm. novel, mm. but the film itself? Yes. The Wild I've actually Geese. got, I've got two or three copies of it. I think I even have a VHS version. Mm. Oh, yeah? <laughs> oh, yeah. Cling it to the old days, there. and there's even a Blu-ray version of it, which is which is really good. Really and great good. making of here too. A good, yes, good profile of you and Lloyd, the producer. Yes, yeah, great. Who producer. was a hugely talented mm. producer and did mm. a lot with uh, yeah. Roger Moore, actually. Yes, he did. Actually, Sea yes. Wolves was another. Yes, yes, very so, good. Yeah, great film. Yeah, score out of ten though. Marks out of ten. Big ten out of ten for me. Ten out of ten. There's no doubt about it. So this goes straight into number one position. Yes. <laughs> we haven't done any more films yet. But it goes straight to the top of our list of some of the greatest films ever made. Absolutely. Certainly from me, from my point of view, it's right out there at the top. Fantastic. The Wild Geese, ladies and gentlemen. If you haven't seen it, you must watch it. If you have watched it, you've got to watch it again. It's brilliant. Mark, thank you ever so much. You're welcome. See you again soon on Film Talk. Look forward to it. Rabbit and Snails Film Talk. Thank you very much for watching. <laughs>